Hi, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and fix up this drill here. So it's a tea brake repair. So pause the video, go get yourself a drink and let's see over the next 10 or 15 minutes if we can get this drill working. So it's come from a viewer called Mike. I'm going to show you the little note in a moment. If you're interested, this is my PO box number in case you're in the UK and you fancy sending something over to me via Royal Mail. So with this drill, it doesn't work. It's come with the battery and the charger. I've just got those on charge for the last 15 or 20 minutes. So let's get it over to the blue mat, put it together and show you it not working. So I have the battery plugged back into it now and if you have a look, when I do this, the light lights up but when I go into the reverse and forward motion, it's not doing anything at all. And also if I go onto that setting there, it's not doing anything either. Also there's a little battery indicator there, I wonder whether, now that's not lighting up. Hmm, I wonder if this is a battery issue. Right, let's see what it says here. It says, Hi Vince, please find enclosed a cordless drill, battery and charger. There is hot glue on the wires of the charger up against the body of the charger plug, like so. I put it there ages ago to stop the wires from wiggling and snapping. The wires were not broken or exposed, it's just for reinforcement and to prevent damaging the charger plug in its day-to-day -day use as it was stored in a box in my workshop. I charged up the battery for an hour this morning and still nothing. The LED battery charge display doesn't light up either. The only sign of life I can get is the work light coming on if I set the forward reverse direction switch into the middle, which is the same as what it's doing now. There has been no event to cause damage. The drill hangs on the wall within reach of my bench and was working fine one day and dead the next time I picked it up. It has not been used for anything that would put an excessive load on the motor. Its only use has been for running screws in and out of the oak workbench that I use. The only thing I can think of the factor might be dust. I guess some of this may have found its way into a drill into the drill switches. It wasn't an expensive drill. I think it was 20 or 30 pound from Aldi, but it has until now been a reliable tool. Hopefully it can be repaired and be of use again. Kindest regards from an avid viewer, Mike Speakman. So thank you very much, Mike, for the background information. So I suppose first things first, before opening it up, we need to measure voltages. So let's take this out here because there's no icons coming on here for the, for the battery. So let's get our multimeter and let's set it to DC volts. Now this is 18 volts here. So let's see if it is measuring 18 volts. We got positive and negative. It's not, it's only measuring 13 volts. Hmm, so that might be enough to power the lights, but it might not be enough to actually power the, uh, the motor side of things. Right, let's plug this in and see if we've got anything coming out of the charger. So again, I'm on volts DC, and I'm just going on the outer pin and the inner pin and we have 22 volts. Now it's not under load, so it doesn't mean it's definitely fine, but it does look to be okay initially. There's definitely voltage coming out of it. Let's get the bench power supply up and let's put 18 volts directly into here because we've got the plus and the negative here and let's see what it does. All right, so I've got my bench power supply here, so we're gonna up the voltage to 18 volts. Okay, and now we're gonna hit the leads together. I'm just gonna put in a, I think that will be fine, 1.5 amps, 1.8 amps, I mean. Yeah, let's leave it at that. Now, put these straight onto here and let's see if anything happens. So we've got our negative here and our positive here. There we go. Oh, it kind of ramps up. Yeah, it's drawing just under one amp. So it is definitely battery related. Now, it's only been about five minutes. I just want to see if it's increased at all. Yes, it has. We're now up to 13.8. Right, okay, I'm just going to fully charge it and then uh, come back to this in about an hour or so. Right, it's only a few minutes later, but if you have a look here, if I was to get the multimeter and plug it in here while it's charging, you can actually see that it is slowly going up. So you can see there we're at 0.724 at the end, and then 2.5, and about another five seconds it will go up to 2.6, yeah? So you can see that it is putting a charge into the battery. Now it's got more interesting. It's only been about 20 minutes and we've got the green light on. And according to this, it's on 20 volts. But unless it's a, a quick charger, 
but I'm wondering whether the battery's failed because that's charged up pretty quick. Yeah, still nothing there. Right, and yet it's registering as being on green. Let's see what voltage we got. Yeah, 15.3. That's not high enough, is it? Because it needs to be uh, it needs to be 18 or fully charged. It's probably a little more. So there's something not right here. Let's take this apart and see if we can see anything on the inside. So we've got four little screws. Right, so these, these are those uh, 18650 batteries. Or 18650, I don't know the way to pronounce them, but you know the ones, they're in quite a few, uh, quite a few like power banks and stuff like that. I wonder has one of the cells failed? Because why is it registering as it being green? So it's done when it's not done. Shall I go across each of them? Pierce through here and just see what, uh, see what we're getting? So these are gonna be 3.7 volts each. So fully charged, they're gonna be about 4.2, I think, ish. So that's 4.1, I say that one's good. 4.1, four, getting lower, 3.8. And four. Okay, well if we average that out at four, four, well one, two, three, four, five. So that should be 20 volts coming out of here, shouldn't it? And yet that's not what we've got. How is it wired up then? So it's all gonna be in series between here and here. So let's see, we should have 20 volts here and here. Oops. Which we have. So if we've got 20 volts there and there, why have we not got 20 volts coming out of the contacts? 20 volts there, 15 volts there. So what is happening? So now let's try to find out why. I mean, what I'm also wondering is, could it be because the batteries are not under load that we're measuring the right voltage, but maybe if I was to put them under load, they would drop massively. But the thing is, we're still getting different voltages here and here. And would the circuit be putting that much load on? I'm not so sure. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna start moving around the circuit to see if I can find out where we have 20 volts and where we don't have 20 volts. So it looks like this massive area down here is all on the same ground all the way here. So for example, if I was to go to here and here, it should still be 20 volts, which it is. So now let's go here. Okay, so good, we've got 20 volts there, there. Now, does that just go up to here? The wires are not very long. Let's see now if I go between here and here. Yeah, 20 volts. So it's on the negative side then that somehow we're losing, we're losing the voltage. Ooh. Is it through here then? Because look, we've got 20 volts here here, here, and here, but not here. 15.2, 15.2, and is that the same as there? Yeah, 15.2. So now it's dropping through these, is that normal? Busy man tonight. Back again. There's my son ringing from upstairs, as if I live in some sort of castle that you need to have phone communication. Apparently there's a solo eclipse tonight, he was telling me. Right, uh, which is not tonight when you're watching the video. Okay, so we're having some sort of loss through here. But I don't know if that's normal or not, and I haven't got a spare battery to test. Let's plug it in. And see what's happening now. Ah, so we've got 20 volts there now, haven't we? We've got 20 volts there now. Well, I think this is gonna be beyond me. I suppose most people will just change the battery out. We know the fault's on the battery. I just kind of wanted to prove what it was. Was it a cell or was it something more? See, look, we've gone to a green light now. So it thinks it's charged, but it hasn't. 
So I suppose when it gets to 20 volts, it thinks it's charged. But it's not getting to 20 volts. But it is there. So, our, so the cells are charged up because they're reading f roughly 4 volts each, aren't they? It was only these ones that were a bit, a bit less. 3.9, but that's still charged because they're 3.7 batteries. Yeah, see, look, they are climbing when it's in red. I'm just going to leave it here until it goes to green. And now it's dropped right back. Look at that. So we're at 3.913. Let's unplug this. 3.913. 3.913. One zero here. Okay. So when it goes to green, it's not charging anymore. But that's still not enough to uh, to charge this. To make it work. Oops. Hold on. Have I just put that? No, I didn't put that in the wrong way. Oh, look at that. That's eaten right into there. What did that just short against? Have I blown it now completely? Do you know what? I must have hit against one of these capacitors down here. No, it's still okay. Luckily. But I tell you what's going through my mind at the moment is, is it the cells that have gone weak, which you would expect after time, this is not a brand new drill? Or is it something on the board that's causing it to go weak? What I'd like to do is, I wonder whether we could just temporarily get the contacts from here and here, because that's the end of the batteries, and just put them onto here just to see if that 20 volts is enough to make it work, or maybe as soon as I do that, it might not work anyway, in which case then it's gonna be nothing to do with the circuit here. I think that would probably be the uh, the best thing to do. So let's get something set up where I can do that. Right, okay, I'm just, uh, now this is a complete bodge job. I say it in a lot more videos, don't copy what you see here. I'm just purely experimenting. I don't know if this is the, if this is safe to do because we are completely bypassing the circuit. But remember, we're not charging anything. I just wanna see whether or not we can get any life out of the drill at all. Now I've soldered this side here, but I haven't soldered this side because I wanna uh, let go of it as quick as I possibly can. So I'm just gonna rest that against uh, that one here. I think that's gonna make a contact. And I'm just gonna put that here, see if it's gonna do anything. Whoa, it's a big spark. Let's try that again. Oh God. Oh God. Okay, right, it doesn't like that. Oh, look at that, it's really, uh... oh, no, I think that's just bad soldering. Okay, now why, if we've just got, if I've put that on the right side, which I have, negative and positive, why, when we've got 20 volts there, did it behave like that, as if it was kind of uh, shorting? I wasn't expecting that to happen. Twenty volts. Hmm. Uh, if we've got twenty volts there and we bypass that, is it because I've left it connected to the circuit? Because surely the batteries are only going to give what this is drawing. You know. I mean, we've put twenty volts in it from, from the bench power supply. But it didn't like that at all, did it? Look, it was welding. It was welded itself to there. Right. Well, I'm sure somebody will uh, definitely know the answer to that in the comments. Right. Well, we're not trying that. We're not trying that again. I don't really know how to fault find this anymore. If I'm honest with you. Right. Let me unsolder this wire here. It's unsoldered. And I've just broken off the uh, the bit there. So.
Hold on, we've got 20 volts here now. What? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, oh, that, I bet you I must have fried something in here. Right, let's see now that we've got 20 volts. I mean, I haven't charged it up since. So we've got 20 volts there and 20 volts here. Let's see now, is that going to actually power the drill? Right, oh, that's safe. Oh. What have I done? Oh, no, hold on. Why is that not... Uh, have I just burnt the whole inside of this? That was perfect before. That's not working now. Right, let's see. Okay. Right, we've still got our light. Yeah, but the switch is broken. Yeah. It's working though, isn't it? Right, why is the switch suddenly gone? I mean, it can't have been the switch all along because it was working on the bench power supply. Hmm, well, whatever it is, I've truly mucked it up now. Let's see if this is still going to charge or is it going to explode now. Is it even going to... Oh, it's going to charge. Should we see if it goes to green. So, when I did that and the big spark came, since then the switch is not working. But surely that switch is like a mechanical thing. Let's take it apart. I'll leave that charge away. This is going to be a long tea break repair, that's for sure. This should have been a trying to fix video. Just going to measure this, make sure there's no dangerous voltage getting pushed into it. No. And it is climbing. Yeah, so it is charging. Well, hopefully it will go to green. It's gone to green. Excellent. Let's see now if the uh, voltage has stopped going up into it. Yeah, but it's definitely not climbing. Yeah, fantastic. Looks like I haven't blown up the battery. Now, what have I done? It needs to go all the way out. It's not. Now, in order to shorten the longest tea break repair ever, I'm just going to do a voiceover on this bit here. So it turns out in the switch that there's a spring which you would expect to shove the trigger back out again. The spring is basically kind of gone hard. So I think what's happened is that voltage that went into it must have worked its way to the spring and kind of burnt it a bit. So it still compresses a bit, but not it's not as springy as it was before, basically. So you've still got spring in it like you would have even if you just coiled up some uh, copper wire, it's still gonna be slightly springy. It just, uh, it doesn't compress as good as a spring normally does. So uh, I have to take this switch completely apart in order to get to the spring. And in doing that, it's quite destructive. The switch is not really made to be taken apart. But anyway, I do do that bit and then I elongate the spring out a bit, but it's still not enough because when you compress it again, it kind of stays in that compressed form. So I've had to extend out the spring by using loads of solder, about maybe about six or seven millimeters of solder, and that puts the spring back into the trigger. So now the bit you see now is basically the switch apart, and I just kind of explain how I think it works, and then we need to close it up and do a test to see now if it's gonna work, because we have 20 volts coming out of the battery now, and uh, the only thing wrong with this at this moment in time is the fact that the trigger is not working because it's just been stuck in rather than springing out. Okay, so it's still partly dismantled, but I understand how the mechanism with the springs work now. So we've got three contacts down here, and remember it has to allow the switch in from forward to reverse as well. So this one here is always going up to here. That's just in contact all the way up. But when it comes to this black wire here, when it's all the way out here, this is not joined to here. Yeah, but so it's not gonna go up to here. But yet when we push it in, it then allows these two to contact here 
and then it brings it up to here. Now, when we pull it all the way out, there's also another contact at the back here, and that was sort of confusing me, but that's to allow this other one here, this little contact at the back, which I think is to do with the LED lights. So if I was to go between here and here, you can see that if I'm, if I'm uh, here, hold on now, if I'm all the way in, There we go, when I'm all the way out, it doesn't do anything. But remember, all we have to do is press it in a tiny little bit to get the LED to work. And listen, you can see it goes there. And also when we go all the way in, it will work. Yeah, so because with this one, when it's in the middle, you can just press it in a little bit to get the LED to work. So it's only when it's fully out that that won't contact with that one there. There, like so. But as soon as it goes in a tiny bit, then it will work. So I understand all that, so now I've got to extend the spring out. Uh, this little contact that runs on there, these kind of metal fingers, it looks like they're just joining up these two tracks here. And there's loads of little lines here, so that must be how it can tell between here and here how fast, how much power to put through to the motor. So for example, when it's on one side, it's not gonna put much, but when it goes all the way to the other side, it's gonna put more. And you can see it goes to the vials on each of them. So I think that's what happens there. So now I've just got to try and get it back together. So it's the next day now, let's give this a little test. It's a test designed to make it fail. Obviously, small little drill trying to get into a massive thick bit of wood with a, uh, whatever this is, six or seven mil drill bit. So let's, uh, let's see if it can manage it or not. And it has, amazingly, that's gone all the way through. Wow, that is very strong. Right, let's bring it inside, finish up the video. Right, so there we have it. You probably think that it's fixed, but some of you would already realize what the problem is. So it's fine when I drilled through the wood, but did you notice when I was screwdriving, I had no control over it. And that's because look, even if I do it a tiny little bit, it makes no difference between a small bit and a lot. Now, I know the video, well, this video has been super long for a T-brake repair, but I have actually been on it for quite a while. I can't work out exactly what's gone on that switch, but it needs a new switch. Looky, looky what I've bought here for, I think it was four pounds from Amazon Prime as well. A little trigger switch here, which is apparently 7.5 volts to 24 volts DC. So, and what's that, 16 amps or something? 11? I'm not sure. But anyway, that should cover the drill, shouldn't it? I'm going to see if I can fit this. It doesn't look as good as the one that was there originally, but I'm going to see if I can fit this into the one that's there. Uh, sorry, into the drill, because the one that's there isn't working, is it? Obviously the color's different here, and as well as that, you see this little thing that switches from the forward and reverse. It's very narrow, while this one's fat, so it doesn't fit in this one here, but that's fine. I can just shave a bit off, but check it out. I now have control. Slow, faster. 
And it's got the uh, brake as well. Can you see it kicks in? So excellent. I just need to shave that bit down and I think then we're going to have, hopefully, fingers crossed, at long last, a working drill. Okay, I thought it was easier to shave down the yellow bit here rather than the little black switch that flicks because uh, there's a lot more plastic on here so it's going to be more forgiving. And if you have a look now you can see that uh, it's moving fine and still allows full movement off the trigger. So I'm going to get this fully back together and then we can finish up this video. So it's test time now, and we're gonna be doing the three inch screw into the four inch wood test again, now that the trigger is working with control. But is the drill safe? I'm not so sure, because to begin with, we already know that this is much beefier than the one that I put in there, the replacement one. And if I look closely here, it says seven, I think it says seven point something volts to 24 volts, and it says 20 amps. There you go, can you see 20 amps there? Now I have to look closely at what the other one said, but it definitely said I think it was 11 to 16 amps or something like that. So I'm not sure whether this is actually going to be safe to use or not, or whether it's going to go up in flames and overheat. Anyway, for the purpose of the video, it's quite nice to know that you can replace the triggers. Maybe they're only suitable on lower power drills, or maybe if you shop around a bit, maybe you can get the exact replacements. I just had a quick look on eBay and Amazon, and they all seem to be, in fact, I bought the beefier one. They all seem to be either this one here or an even smaller one. But anyway, Let's do the test, see how it's going. So I've got it set to 18 here, and I've got it set to the low speed. Let's go in here, give myself a little bit of room. Right, here goes. go it managed to bring it all the way in an amazing amount of power in this and very quick as well that didn't really seem to strain much at all There we go, I'll tell you what, it looks like a, a nice little drill. What I have noticed is the battery thing here is no longer working. And also when you put it into the middle thing, it's not doing the light anymore when it's in the middle. So obviously there must be some kind of circuitry in here, which is uh, making making that work. I thought that might have just measured straight from the, the batteries, but uh, maybe not. Anyway, there we have it. So massive thanks to Mike for sending it in. Apologies that I didn't actually get a proper answer in the video as to what the fault was. I mean, I think it was something to do with the battery because it was only outputting 15 volts rather than 20 volts. But why? Two things I need answers to. When we put the bench power supply on, you've seen it work perfectly earlier. Why then, when we went straight from the terminals of the battery, which was 20 volts, why did it just kind of like, like it was shorting and it just dragged it in and it was like I was welding for a couple of seconds there. Quite entertaining, but uh, why did it do that? Also, the other thing which was very confusing is why, when we had that incident, did this just suddenly start working and have 20 volts here rather than 15 volts? Really confusing. So, uh, yeah, from my point of view, it's been, uh, it's been a bit of a head scratch, this one here. But I know that you guys will have the answers down into the comments. Please put the answers down into the comments because it's going to be interesting for me to read. I'm sure it's going to be interesting for many other people to read. And I presume it's going to be interesting for Mike, who was the original owner of the drill, to read as well. I think the original problem was to do with the battery. Maybe I'll do a bit more research and see if I can actually get this proper one because it's not going to take long to put the proper one in. And then... The, back there, the drill itself will be working fine. And if this plays up again in the future, at least you know it's ju it just needs a new battery. So uh, yeah, that is it for this video. Massive thanks to Mike for sending it to me. Big shout out to Ella Shaw. She likes to watch these videos with her dad at the weekend. And big shout out to everybody else that watches the videos and helps out on the comments, answering the questions that I can't. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care of yourselves.